What's up, you guys? It's your cousin Crystal bringing you another video. Another video. Hey, y'all. Hey. Okay, so basically, let's go ahead and jump into this video. But before we get started, go ahead and press the thumbs up for your cousin. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new here. If you've been a part of the family, thank you so much for still sticking by my side and staying aboard. Um, also, don't forget to turn your notifications on so you will always be notified when your cousin is dropping a new video. Um, not to mention, I see that we have a lot of new subscribers and supporters. I want to thank y'all so much for becoming a part of the family. Um, whether you were referred over here, if you was just strolling on YouTube and you just wanted to, you know, get educated on a few things. It's okay. That's what I'm here for. Um, basically I'm just going to go ahead and jump into this video. Um, I am, I, I can't believe it. Like I cannot believe it. I am, let me see, March, April, May, June. Next week, I will be four months post stop four months post stop i cannot believe it like oh my god four months post stop y'all i'm about to be four months post stop it took me a long time to get to where i am to get my body to where it is mentally and physically okay let's go back down the road of memory lane Originally, when I first started this journey, I was a bit skeptical of even having surgery. I had a lot of people in my ear that was really trying to discourage me from having surgery. Not only that, I did not have enough positive people in my ear saying, you deserve this. Why not? Why not go have surgery? You saved up your money. This is what you've been wanting all this time. And now is your time to go ahead and do what it is that you've been playing, praying for and planning for. So I had to encourage myself. The same thing I'm, t I'm telling myself, I'm sure you had to eventually tell yourself if you are currently going through the surgery journey, getting ready to have surgery, or are you kind of skeptical of having surgery? For the ones that's kind of one foot in or one foot outside the door, let me just tell you this. At the end of the day, you have to tell yourself or ask yourself, um, do I want to keep, you know, pushing my date back? Do I want to keep being in denial of if I really want this or if I really want to do this? You know, at the end of the day, you have to be strong for yourself if you do not have anybody that can be strong for you or with you. You know, this journey is not for everybody. At the same time, if this is something that you've been wanting, do not feel discouraged at all. Hold your head up. Pray about it. Manifest about it. Continue to save your money up. Continue to get your BMI where you need it to be. Continue to get your hemo where you need it to be. Focus on what it is that you need to focus on so you can go ahead and have your surgery. Now, like I said, when I first started this journey, I was still kind of like one foot in, one foot out as well. But I can say I will not, if I can change back the hands of time, I wouldn't have changed back anything that I've done. Now, you do have to take in consideration when getting this surgery, a lot of things change. Your body goes through shock. Your body goes through a lot of changes. Not only does it affect your body physically, but it affects you mentally. Not only that, it affects your community around you and the people that surround you. It affects your family and your friends and the naysayers and people that you don't even know, right? You can be out, people are staring at you, people are gossiping, people are whispering, people are smiling, people may ask you about your surgery or people may just be, you know, just looking at you, you know? You have to be prepared for all of the different reactions that you're going to come encounter with when it comes to going through this surgery journey. And like I said, this surgery journey is not for the weak. It's not just physically, it's mentally. You have to be mentally prepared. 
Was I mentally prepared? No. Originally, I was not mentally prepared, but I was physically prepared. I did what I needed to do. I, I lost the weight that needed to be lost in order for me to get clear to have my surgery. I got my blood to where it needed to be, my levels. I got cleared, my EKG and everything in order for me to have my, my first surgery. My first surgery was a tummy tuck. I had my tummy tuck back in 2021. When I tell you I was a bit nervous, but I wasn't that nervous because I had already had two C-sections. First off, if you've already had kids and you've already had a C-section, stop comparing it to a tummy tuck. It's somewhat similar, but not quite the same. You're still getting cut, but you're not recovering the same. The wounds are different inside and out. Everything is different. Your body is going through a shock. Every surgery is not the same. You can have two or three kids. All those pregnancies would not be the same. You can have two or three surgeries. All those surgeries are not going to be the same. Your healing is going to be different. Every surgery that we encounter, we're building up scar tissue. You're building up several scar tissue, a lot of scar tissue every time when you have surgery. When you're building up that scar tissue, it takes your body longer to heal and recover. Just FYI. So also keep that in the back of your mind. That's what I had to keep and keep in consideration as well when I kept continually to book to go have surgery. But I was determined. I wasn't addicted to surgery. I was just determined to get my body to where it needed to be. A lot of people think once they have surgery that they're going to, it's one and done. That's not so happily ever after for everybody. Some people have to go back a second time. Some people have to go back a third time. Me not understanding the, the surgery journey in the surgery world, I did not understand why would a person have to go back so many times. After going under the knife and being an actual patient, now I see why you have to go back a second time or a third time. It's not really too much about perfection. It's just getting to your goal, getting to what you what you really, really want, you know? And some people can be lucky enough and just do one round and be satisfied, satisfied with just that one round. But that doesn't happen with everybody. And unfortunately, that didn't happen with me. Um, when I first got my first round, I like I said, I had a tummy tuck that was back in 2021. I wanted to make this video so I can pretty much re be a relatable person to a lot of the young girls that either had surgery before, never had surgery, kind of skeptical about having surgery, or like I said, you just one foot in and one foot out. Why did you have a tummy tuck, girl, and why did you go back and get this, and why did you go back and do that? Let me go ahead and get started. I had a tummy tuck first because originally I wanted to get a BBL. I didn't want to get a BBL just to try to fit in with other people or to try to have a big booty or to try to be a a, 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 a celebrity style looking like type chick. I didn't want to I didn't want a BBL just for that. I wanted to get a BBL because I feel like I did not have an ass. I I wanted perfection. Um, I had a lot of insecurities, but my insecurities wasn't mentally. My insecurities was physically. It's a difference. Um, when I went and had my surgery the first time I was single. So all my insecurities was dealt with me and within myself. So with that being said, everything that I, I, I planned and I prayed for was for me and my well-being. It wasn't for anybody else. I wanted to get a BBL for enhancements. I wanted to enhance my body. But unfortunately, that was put to the burner. I wasn't able to get a BBL the first round. I had to get a tummy tuck because I had a lot of excess skin as well as I had a fupa. I had a fupa because I had two C-sections, which caught well, two pregnancies, which caused two C-sections, which caused me to develop a fupa. I did everything leading up to surgery to try to get rid of that. Little did I know excess skin, it was never going to go away. I tried all types of tightening creams, body wraps, and all of this. That doesn't work for everybody. By me being so young and my skin was starting to be so loose, I was terrified. I was afraid to wear certain things. I was embarrassed to wear certain things, even just looking at myself in the mirror and posing for pictures. I always had to stand to the side, hide my stomach and everything. One thing I can say after getting my tummy tuck, it built up my pride. It built up my pride into wearing certain things, not being like 
not wearing things as far as like revealing and stuff like that. Just being able to wear a shirt and not having a big pudge or just walking around my house in some cute pajamas and don't have to feel like I'm a big slouch just sitting on the couch, you know? So I wanted to get back to feeling back sexy and feeling back young for myself after having kids and my kids are now older teenagers so it's like why should I have to sit around here and feel this way and I'm not even planning on having more kids so I went on ahead and I made up in my mind that I wanted to go ahead and have go ahead and do a c-section I mean a tummy tuck so I went on ahead and did my tummy tuck after the tummy tuck of course that's when I read into another dead end I ran into another dead end with the BBL because at this point of time I did not have enough fat to transfer because I just got all my fat taken out due to the tummy tuck and the fupa. So now I'm like, oh my God, not to mention I had a hernia. I needed to get a hernia repair. That was the main reason why I could not get my BBL the first time as well. I had to get the hernia removed. In order to get the hernia removed, I either could have did one, got the hernia removed first, came back in three to six months, then got my BBL. Or I could have got the hernia removed, came back in three months, and then got the tummy tuck. Come to find out, after educating myself, I knew I wanted the tummy tuck to get rid of the excess skin and the pupa. I went on ahead and I scheduled to have my hernia removed with my tummy tuck. I paid an extra $1,000, but I got my hernia removed. I could have been got my hernia removed after I had my baby, but my doctor asked me and I said, well... My hernia is not bothering me. Why should I bother it? <laughs> so I didn't ever get my hernia removed until I got my tummy tuck. So then I went on ahead, got my tummy tuck. Oh my God, I had my drains in for 14 days. Let me tell you something. Those drains are going to be your best friend. Let me tell you something. I don't care what nobody tell you. Try your best when you have those drains in and you've been cut open and you have that tape on you, try your best to not get them wet. If you happen to get them wet, put a blow dryer to it. But intentionally getting them wet, you do not want to increase your chance of getting an infection, okay? You do not want to increase your chance of getting an infection. Um, long story short, I didn't get an infection. Um, one of my stitches did open up. But I have a womb specialist. It is good to always have someone in your local town who's good who's good with um with wombs and stuff like that. You want to make sure that you follow up with if you have a PCP, especially the one who maybe had cleared you for surgery, if you have a good relationship with them, because some doctors and practitioners and general internal medicine practitioners do not like to deal with patients who've had surgery out of the state especially plastic surgery and you're not their patient so they handled it very very cautiously so you want to make sure that you very much so taking care of yourself after surgery that's number one for sure your post-op care is what's important your massages you want to make sure you have enough money put to aside for your massages me my first round i did not get all the massages that i was supposed to i think i did like four five five them by the max i want to say i did in massages and typically with a tummy tuck you're not supposed to touch the front abdominal area i did get that area touch a little bit but not as much but i feel like looking back i wish i would have because I, my stomach would have been even flatter um but everybody's body is different you know um that was in 2021 2022 i came back I got my BBL. I went to Dr. Cannon over at Vixen Plastic Surgery. I did my research on him. Um, I highly love his work. I feel like he's good when it comes to the BBLs. That's all I wanted was a BBL. And I wanted the rest of the lipo fat removed. When I got my tummy tuck, they do not cover your back fat. They do not do a 360 on you unless you add a 360 on. 360 is included with your two flanks, which is your left and your right side, your front, your lower abdominal area, and your back, your upper um, bra fat area. That is your 360. When you get in a tummy tuck, if you do not have that on, you is not getting a full 360. You're just going to get the abdominal area and the two flanks, okay? 
um when i got my bbl i did not add on a 360 with the, like i said lipo 360 automatically comes with the bbl but i did not feel like dr cannon or his assistants did my lipo 360 as aggressive as i would have wanted it after doing my research after my tummy tuck i knew that my next round with the bbl that i wanted more aggressive um lipo 360 when i say lipo 360 aggressively that's when they're really really getting the fat out of you I highly recommend now, since I didn't have my BBL, I highly recommend if you do choose your doctor for a BBL or lipo 360 and you're back there getting drawn up, it's okay to ask them after they pull out enough fat to put in your BBL, is it enough? Do you have enough more fat to pull out just for an even contour? Because if even though they pulled out enough fat just to put in your butt, you still may have a little bit more fat that they can pull out just to make it even more of a smooth contour. So if they have not pulled out the whole four liters, three liters or whatever, and they pulled out, let's say, two and a half liters, and that's enough for the shape that you're going for, they still can go back and pull out some more fat, not to inject, but just to take out to give you a better, more so Lipo 360 contour um, shape, okay? Um, after that, like I said, I wasn't satisfied with my BBL uh, Lipo 360, but I did like my butt. To this day, I'm a year post-op. When I tell you, I just made a year post-op in May from my BBL from Dr. Cannon. When I tell you, I am in love with my butt. So now that I've been feeding my fat the way I'm supposed to, and I feel more comfortable with how I'm feeding my fat, um, my fat has stuck. I'm stuck with it. They say you lose up to 30 to 30% 30 of your fat. I don't think I had lost 30%. I would say maybe 15 to 20%, but I gained it back. Every time I eat, I feel like it does not go to my gut. It goes straight to my butt. That's just me. I feel like um, after they said after six months to a year, however your butt is, that's how the fat, the fat is going to stick. Now, if you start toning up and stuff like that, you want to be careful with cardio because when you're doing cardio, you're losing fat. And remember, your fat was just transferred to your butt. So you want to get with an instructor or get educated on um, biceps and stuff like that, body toning, um, squats sit up stuff like that toning in your stomach area as well as your butt area you know you want to be able to do those type of uh recommendations so you will not lose your butt fat so roughly after that i went on ahead and i booked with dr triggs i was originally supposed to be in a shanklin doll he was originally at vixen at the time but due to him separating from over there at vixen and going to smart they would not transfer my money, all of my money over there to Dr. Shanklin. So that's why I say it's always good to have a backup plan, to have a backup doctor. So I end up switching um, to Dr. Triggs. That's why I say it's always good to have a backup doctor because you never know if anything goes left. Um, you will also have a backup doctor. So I already knew Dr. Trees was real good with the breasts. At this point, I wanted to get another round of Lipo 360 and I wanted to go ahead and get breast implants with a lip. Um, all of my doctors, Dr. Cannon, Dr. Simmons, and Dr. Triggs, all three of them were phenomenal. Their bedside manners was great. Um, how they handled handled me during the whole process of drawing me up um speaking with me i was able to see dr triggs at pre-op due to he had to do my measurements and we had to discuss the type of implants that i wanted um i felt very comfortable with him i i felt like we gained like um uh, a relationship you know, and I felt like I was in good hands, which I was. I felt like he was very aggressive. He understood my concern with my previous Lipo 360. And he, I felt like he was very, very 
um, aggressive with my lipo 360. Let me tell you something. If you come out of surgery and you didn't have lipo 360 and you're not bruised up or you're not feeling no pain or feel like you've been touched on one side, that means you wasn't touched on that side, cousin. You wasn't touched. Baby, when I tell you I was aching from left, right, front, back, everything. Um, he also administered um, chin lipo. As you can see, my chin, like, I used to have, like, a double chin. He did amazingly work, good work on my chin as well. So, yeah, like I said, I highly recommend um, if you're trying to debate on what doctor, that means you're still at the beginning. You still need to sit back, reevaluate. You need to educate yourself more on this doctor. Do some thorough background checks on the doctor just to make sure that you re that you are reinsured that you're doing uh, the right thing and you're going to be in the right hands. At the end of the day, these doctors are not God. They do make mistakes. We all put our life on a risk. We all take a risk when we put our life in their hands, okay? We do not know what goes on after we are under anesthesia. Only thing we can do is pray and stay um, um, stay manifesting good positive thoughts and vibes and keep positive people in your ear. Get out of those negative groups, you know, and just, just stay happy. This is your moment. If you are contemplating on having surgery or you getting ready to have surgery or even if you just had surgery congratulations because guess what whether you just starting or you just finished you you're doing it you did it we are here so i say this to say i i hope my videos encourage a lot of you all if you're still trying to build your hemo up and stuff like that i have videos on that if you're still trying to figure out if uh, you chose the right doctor or you have any questions, feel free to inbox me. My information is below for a consultation. Um, other than that, I wish you all the best and thank you for watching. I feel like falling in love. I'm in the mood to fuck something up. I don't fucking something. I need some drink in my cup.